everybody. Welcome to Behind the Bolt with Pro Bowler Nick Hardwick. I am Jordan Bean, obviously at a disappointed Chargers Park where last week against the Steelers, the Chargers needed to stop Pittsburgh from getting three inches. And this week up in Green Bay, the Chargers offense needed to get three yards to force overtime and try to win that game. It was a tough loss, but is it a loss the Chargers can gain confidence in? Yeah, it's weird to hear that. We lose and then we're more confident from it. It seemed as if the Chargers were going to feel their way into this game and two offensive series for the Packers in with two touchdown scores. You think the Chargers aren't even in the same league. But there was a turn of fate there, and it happened with a series of events starting with Jerry Atalchu's sack on Aaron Rodgers, which forced a punt. 12 plays, 88 yards later, Phillip Rivers is leading the boys down the field. One yard touchdown strike to Dontrell Inman to close the half out. Zeros on the clock. And by the way, it's a fourth and goal. Yeah. Gutsy call by Mike McCoy, but very necessary. So Nick, you believe that optimism can be gained in a loss. Earlier uh, this week, I asked on Twitter, Chargers fans, do you think that that same thing could happen? How did you feel after the game? We got some good tweets in. Somebody like Micah Mariquin said, hopefully optimistic. We compete with the best team in the NFC, had some tough breaks, but if we can get healthy, Look out. Also, Robert Saber agrees, says optimism, long periods of domination, both sides of the ball, hanging with the best in the NFL until the last second. Mario Garcia, though, believes that it, that performance was miserable. Love my Chargers and the pain they cause me is unhealthy. So kind of, uh, you know. <laughs> maybe Mario's just miserable. Maybe he is, exactly. Come, Come on, on, Mario. Cheer the glass is at full. Yeah, yeah. Be We're optimistic. about to go on a roll. Exactly. Five in a row. And you're going to be led by. Maybe more. Yeah, who knows, especially with Phillip Rivers under center for the Chargers, a performance for the ages from number 17. How good did you feel about the guy that used to uh, kind of touch your butt every once in a while? <laughs> well, I always did enjoy that. He was remarkable. 503 yards, 43 for 65. The guy was on fire. And I'm saying this, in his favorite stadium, Lambeau Field, he used to idolize Brett Favre growing up and he gets to go perform like him, slinging the ball around, commanding the offense, picking up blitzes, finding outlets. The guy was so sharp. Keenan Allen, 14 for 157. Gatesy had 95 yards. Malcolm had 95 yards. Pee Wee had another touchdown. Well, the big key for the Chargers to get that offense going was the play of the offensive line. You've been talking over the past couple of days of just how good they were in guys that you really, you know, they were not expected when the season began to be starters, but here they are. They're your starting five, and they played great. And didn't even know if they were going to have Chris Harrison available throughout the week. He said on Wednesday with no practice that I'm going to do whatever it takes to play in this football game. And I want to thank Chris Harrison for his toughness, but Phillip Rivers did it following the game. I, I want to make sure those, those guys up front, the way they fought and the way they played, is uh, is awesome, and I even single out 75. Chris Harrison, I'd take him any day of the week. He he uh, could walk hardly on Wednesday, and um, those are the guys. That's what makes you. That's what makes you appreciate the guys in front. And I said, Hey, how are you on Wednesday? And he said, I'll be out there. You know, he said, I'll be out there. And that, and and that's what you know the quarterback I appreciate. Shoot, I'm I'm the one who gets to throw it and do all the things out there, and he's got to block. Clay Matthews and Joe Stubbein with all those guys for 60 snaps. So he's one I've mentioned. All those guys, though, Kenny, Trevor, Fluke, Joe Barksdale, they fought their tail off today. Philip Rivers there after the game talking about the play of Chris Harrison. And right now we're going to talk about the play of the defense. And really more than the defense, there seemed to be a little bit of an attitude that the Chargers came out to Lambeau Field with. The coaches were calling fourth down plays. The, the team was one for three on fourth down, technically kind of two for four because they, they drew the Packers offside. Uh, the defense was playing with an attitude when Corey Legion got that sack on Aaron Rodgers. He pushed him back down, yeah. and that's how he got back up. He's, it's just like we're here to play, and we're here to win the game. Yeah, we're not here to pay homage to Aaron Rodgers, the reigning MVP of the Football League. Get out on the ground. I just sacked you. Tell your boys to do a better job taking care of you. And you could see that energy welling up in the defense as the game went along. They held Aaron 16 for 29, 255 yards. Very pedestrian performance. The Chargers did an excellent job limiting one of the best, if not the best, football player in the National Football League. The team obviously playing with confidence all the way through those final four plays. I know it didn't go the Chargers' way, 
But when you look at it, I saw this a lot on Twitter, actually, after the game. People were saying, especially on that second play, Danny Woodhead may have been open. Why didn't Phillip get to him? As a guy who was center for, for Phillip for so many years, you have an idea of what he was thinking. Kind of break down what happened there. Yeah, things get tight time-wise and space-wise when you get towards the end zone there. He did come open. His corner sloughed off to help on Antonio Gates, who I believe the Packers thought was going to be the primary target. Phillip didn't have time to get all the way to Danny on his read progression. They came back to that same play on fourth down or something very similar to it, and he did get to him. Unfortunately, the Green Bay Packers had made adjustments in two plays and covered up Danny pretty well. Well, in a theme of the Chargers season, it was just a few extra inches from Demarius Randall to reach out there, knock that ball away from Danny Woodhead, who would have caught the ball, scored a touchdown, off you go to overtime. So to ensure that the Chargers flip this L coming out of Green Bay to a W against the Oakland Raiders, what are some, some things the Chargers need to clean up coming off of this Packers game? Offensively, Melvin Gordon has to do a better job of taking care of the football. He's got four fumbles on the season. He had two in Green Bay, which earned him some pine time. Hopefully that time spent on the bench is going to do him some favors moving forward because he has to start taking care of that football. It's the all-important magic pill. If you have it in your hands, it's sacred ground. Defensively, they have to figure out a way to stop the big run. They give up a 65-yarder to James Starks and a 25-yarder to start the game off. Those are painful.